Hello guys, it's Kimberly. I am uh, working on some pieces here. Uh, we tried to come live last night or we tried to do a video last evening and share it to our YouTube page, but for some reason that was not working for us. So um, I'm trying a different method. So I'm gonna try and record it uh, on my phone and then send that recording to the uh, YouTube. Uh, it's all new to me, so I'm, it's kind of trial and error. I'm not sure how to work that or make that happen. So I was just going to do a short little video here, introduce myself a little bit, and um, try to get that video transferred over to our YouTube page. And so we can put that link in so people can follow us on our, um, on our YouTube channel. So um, I am Kimberly. I I've had my business for five years uh, in Kernersville, Stokes area here in North Carolina. And um, what I do is I repurpose and refinish vintage furniture. Pretty much all furniture doesn't necessarily have to be vintage, but I try to look for pieces that have some character and sort of speak to me. And, and so I kind of go out, I rescue these pieces and, um, and bring them up to the 21st century, if you will. So um, the piece that I have here, I've been working on. I went and tried to do that video last evening to show you guys what we do, um, but I have several locations. I had the business and then I've kind of tweaked it down into a booth vendor type thing so that I can focus more on the furniture and as well as do uh, pieces for my clients and customers out there. So um, I am a Dixie Bell retailer here in the Triad. I am their premier here. And so I do use Dixie Bell chalk paint, chalk mineral paint products. So um, those are what I use. Uh, those products are also available um, online as well. I do have a Facebook page. That Facebook page is Unique Finds and Designs Boutique. You can um, jump over there on Facebook and find that. And you can see some videos there. Uh, we were trying to make it easier for people to get to the videos because it's been um, a request from us to uh, have more of our one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one videos out there so um, from start to finish. So we'll get pieces in. There'll be great bones. All my pieces I try to find have, have awesome bones to them and great character. And then I repurpose them and repair them. So some of my pieces I have had to repair. I repair vinyl. Or excuse me, vinyl, veneer. So we repair veneer, it peel, it, peel it off if it's bubbled or whatever, and we repair that. Um, and we show that repair process as we go along. And I apologize for the hot mess this morning, just kind of a mess where I'm also a homeschool mom. Um, we've been homeschooling for three years, and so we've been doing a lot of testing. And so the testing part uh, has is why um, I'm coming to you early this morning so that we can get together and um, finish the last phase of my daughter's um, testing for the state here in North Carolina. So um, yes, I just want to do a short, show you guys, um, this is a piece I was working on. I cleaned this piece last evening because we were doing the, trying to do a live on it. So with this piece, I try to, um, when I come and get a piece or evaluate a piece, that's the first thing I do is evaluate it, find out you know, what needs to be done to the piece. Are there any repairs needing to be done? Um, color I'm gonna go with, um, which is always the hardest part because I, I work with a great company that provides so many beautiful colors that I always tell everybody. I also do the, um, always tell everybody that would be the hardest part of repairing your pieces. It's not necessarily finding your piece or fixing your piece, it's always choosing your color. Um, because we do the um, bring your own piece workshops and so that's that's always something I tell my, my gals and guys when they come in. First thing we're gonna do is assess it, we're gonna see what needs to be repaired, and then we're gonna clean it and we're gonna lightly sand it. Um, a lot of chalk paint uh, companies out there, including ours, uh, is not necessary if to have to sand. However, I do lightly sand my pieces because it's a step I just don't skip because that is the step between the adhesion and your piece. So um, the adhesion of your paint and your piece. And a lot of people claim they have adhesion problems with their paint and it's not necessarily the paint, it's the process in which was um, 
done prior to getting your paint on your piece. So um, I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet because uh, obviously I wanna see if I can put this over on our YouTube channel uh, because we're having some technical difficulties with trying to get that accomplished and that's probably more on me because I'm not as tech savvy when it comes to all the different um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, all that fun stuff. So um, we're trying to get going with that out there. But um, this is the piece I will be working on. I'm going to go ahead and shoot that video out, this video out to see if it actually um, makes it on our YouTube channel. And if it does, then we will come back and I will go over the process and, pro and paint this. This piece, I'm, I'm probably going to paint this piece in a nice black. And Dixie Belle has caviar and they have midnight sky. So those are the two blacks that Dixie Belle carries. And I'm also going to work with our um, Prima design, uh, our redesign with Prima transfer in the Ruby Rose is, is most likely what I'm gonna do on this piece. So I definitely upscale our pieces and um, bring them into the new so that they can be um, reconditioned and used in, in people's homes. And so uh, this piece, is what I'm working on. This is a, a 1920s, 1930s, between 1920s, 1930s um, low boy dresser. So um, it is definitely a vintage piece and I think the rose transfer will look nice on this piece. So I will most likely put part of it on the top of this piece because this piece has some imperfections and that's another thing. I don't try to um, hide all of its imperfections because to me that's character in the piece. So I do leave the character. Now if it is is a um, functional problem then obviously I'll fix that. But on this piece fortunately that's not the case so it'll be a pretty quick fix and pretty easy flip as well if you're into um, repairing and, and flipping these pieces out there. So that's what I'm gonna work with um, on this piece. So I just want to come show you some of the products. So this is all Dixie Bell products. In some cases, um, if Dixie Bell has products that um, work for pieces that are really slick and shiny. So, um, and in some cases uh, I use um, the Boss, which I don't have over here right now. Uh, maybe I have it. Let's see. I'm gonna pull it just so you can see some of the pieces that some of the products that I use. So, um, Boss is one of Dixie Bell's products, and it is great for um, odors, um, bleed through, stains, that sort of thing. And um, so. It comes in clear and it comes in white. So if this was a piece that was going to be a bleeder, and a bleeder is normally a piece that's mahogany or um, has some cherry, cherry mahogany or a real red stain. If I see a piece that's a vintage piece like this and it's been stained, then I will automatically put my boss on it. I will clean it, I will lightly sand it, and then I'll put clean it again, and then I'll put my boss on it because my boss is gonna stop the bleed through. And the bleed through process occurs when, after you paint your piece, and then you put your top coat on. So that's a chemical reaction between your top coat and the stain in your piece. It has nothing to do with your paint, and it will pull it through. So, and then a lot of people say, oh, what's happened to my paint? It's not the paint that's got the problem. It is the fact that the stain and the top coat had a reaction to each other, and it will pull through either in a pink or in a, um, a yellowing. So um, that'll just save you all the trouble and just put you some boss on there and that will prevent your problem. Slick stick is something that um, Dixie Belle also has. Slick stick is for surfaces like Famica countertops. Um, you can put that on glass, Famica, um, tile, those kind of things. So um, if you have a, a slick surface that you're wanting to paint, the slick stick is the is the uh, problem solver for that, and we also have um, Dixie Bell Mud. And Dixie Bell Mud is a product that you kind of use like a bondo, and um, so you can repair areas on your piece with the Dixie Bell Mud. And then um, other other things with a, with a Dixie Mud is that you can build Dixie Mud in a stencil also and create some design on your piece if you needed to. 
So um, that's something that the, the mud does. So we have the Slick Stick, the Boss, the mud, and one of our other top products that um, a lot of us use, and that's our top coat, and it's a top coat, and it is Gator Hide. So Gator Hide is a, is a uh, protection that is a, um, a pre protection against water and water damage. So um, most top pieces I put our Gator Hide on, and that gator hide will protect it from somebody setting a cup on it and leaving a ring. So um, that's where our gator hide comes in and I use it. I don't have to use it in every situation, but I do use it in some. So I work with Prima Designs, okay? So Redesign with Primas and Dixie Bell Chalk Paint products. So this is what I work with and then I find pieces with great bones. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, in this particular tutorial because I want to see if we can get it on our um, YouTube channel and then we'll come back if it works this way we'll come back and we will um, start the process of getting this painted and as well as the process of putting our, our Prima design on our piece. So I thank you for coming in and watching this short tutorial. We welcome you. Um, we look to um, continue to get our 101 uh, projects out there as I do many. I have many sitting here waiting. And um, I'm going to let you go for now. And um, check in with us again. And uh, hopefully we will get more videos as we continue to progress along. So thank you for viewing. I hope you have a blessed day. And bye for now.